you know, it feels very wrong doing a Game Detective series and not including this train wreck of a disaster. If you're wondering why there's no footage, it's because, one, I don't own it, and two, because trying to get any of the fucking downloads for it comes in multiple fucking parts, and the only way I... I've gotten like four of the five from Mega, but for some stupid fucking reason, every time I try to get number two, it says, you cannot, it's not there anymore. So unless I was to go to Gamer Gates, Gamer's Gate, and buy it for 15.32, the game I'm referring to is Day One Gary's Incident, which was developed and published by Wild Game Studios in Canada back in 2013. And yes, I am very much aware that I am seven years late to the party, but I don't care. I didn't have a YouTube channel back then, did I? So, ugh. this game got so many negative reviews from critics. This was also a first-person shooter survival horror with what appeared to be um crafting as well. I'm just looking at some of the re reviews when you type in Day One Gary's Incident into YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, uh, Google. Let me just read some of the, um, uh, reviews. Here's one by Joven Rodriguez. Best game ever, 10 out of 10. The graphics are just remarkable, and the cutscene are even better than what they show on TV. If I had to choose what game I had to play for the rest of my life, it would be this. Clearly, you are delusional. Slice and Nate also gave it a 5-star review, give, saying... The best game ever, I enjoyed falling in a loop after I died. Don't know what that means. Basically, the game was buggy as all balls. Two more reviews, I should point out. With five stars. A great game! Okay, this is something to get the minimum number of words. By Mohammed Ghadi. Yep. And find a bad word, Johnny. It's even better than Warcraft 3 Reforged. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Warcraft 3 is actually fucking play it. Actually, I can't really have a go at these people because the guys who gave this five star review, they don't mean it. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, you fucking morons! Okay, so let me just show you guys something. Reviews for four stars, nothing. Review for three stars, nothing. Review for two stars, nothing. Review for one star, you guessed it, nothing. This is fucking atrocious. This is just fucking terrible. The only reviews are five star, and I'll bet you anything what Wild Games Studio did. They set it up. This game is atrocious. And let me point something out. There is actually a Reddit p post you can find on this. It's basically involving a video made by Total Biscuit, which is basically where it all basically went down. Okay, needed to get that out of the way. Uh, sorry, I will... Here's the thing, um, the guy who... Total Biscuits, uh, I knew he died, uh, I, I just couldn't remember what it was he died of, I couldn't remember if it was suicide or something, uh, no, it was cancer, um, that sucks. The only upside I can see to that is, at least he's not here having to deal with the fucking coronavirus, that's the only upside I can see. I don't mean to sound like a dick or anything. Let's just continue. So, day one Gary's incident. Um, Wild Game Studios sent Total Biscuits a review code for this game. And he reviewed the game and thought it was absolutely garbage. And then, Wild Game Studio copy striked the video. Let me repeat that. Total Biscuit, a game reviewer, reviewed a game 
that he got review code from by the game company. He reviewed the game, and then his video got copy striked for it. We'll get into that in a second, but like, can I quickly point out the fucking stupidity there? And this game is also... This game is... You cannot find this game on Steam. It, it's not there anymore. So, here's the gist of... Like, I'll link the video Total Biscuit made on this game. I'll also link a video NerdCube made in response to this. Because it was kind of fucking stupid what Wild Game Studio did. This is literally the tagline on the Reddit. What the fuck is Day One Gary's incident? The video is no longer available due to a copyright claim by Wild Game Studios. That's one way to suppress criticism. Yeah. And it's also one way to come off like a bunch of fucking morons. So here is Total Biscuit basically coming out talking about it. Well, the cat is out of the bag since someone on Reddit found it. My day one Gary's incident video was copyright flagged by the devs. I should point out that this is a game I was sent review code for. It was also the top ranked video on YouTube for that game. It is fairly obvious what they are doing here, abusing YouTube's copyright system to censor criticism of their product. This happened two days ago. We contacted them for an explanation and have heard nothing, giving them till Monday to respond before going nuclear. It should be pointed out that the US Fair Use Doctrine exists in particular to protect criticism from being centered in such a way. It is a pro-consumer doctrine and with good reason. Maker and Polaris will come down on them like a ton of bricks come Monday. Long story short, dev send codes code used to make critique, devs is like critique, devs abuse the system to censor critique. It's annoying that this had to come out, we were trying to solve it privately, but hey, copyright claims are public viewing on YouTube. If I seemed a little grumpy over the last few days, now you know why. Dev attacks my livelihood for doing my job, silently fuming for days. Let's try and process all of that. A game company sent him review codes and then they took that video down with a copyright strike and let me put something out. I, it's not just total biscuit i don't think it's just total, total biscuit who had this happen to him but because of how big he is that's probably what caused the biggest outbreak that's probably what caused the biggest backlash for these guys it's fucking stupid and I, like i said i don't think it's just total, total Biscuit this happened to. I think it's probably a bunch of other YouTubers who also reviewed the game that this happened to. I mean, what the f fuck is the matter? It's time, it's moments like that that kind of make me glad that I'm a small YouTuber. It's moments like that that make me glad I'm a small YouTuber because I don't have to deal with that type of shit. Because that type of shit right there is fucking ridiculous and fucking retarded. I mean, this is almost like air control all over again. I mean, the guy didn't copyright strike any videos, but he got so fucking defensive of his game. And what he was unaware of is the fact that there were so many assets he was using that were stolen. Not my words. Someone else pointed out this, that those assets, there were stolen Unity assets. And not only that, but while we're on the topic of air control, it was fucking horrendous. Like, what was there? If I can find that game and find a way to make a video on it, then awesome. Though I think the only way I'd be able to do that is if I physically flew out to Nerd Cube's house. But what I kindly want to do is highlight that. It should be pointed out that US Fair Use Doctrine exists in particular to protect criticism from being censored in such a way. Does that ring any fucking bells? Well, I fucking hope so, because we've had it happen to Gokunaru involving... Well, not really. I was going to say it, we've had it happen with Gokunaru in his video about Ethan Klein, but then I realized... No. No. Wrong thing. So, scratch that. But we have had it with Just Destiny doing it to Lieutenant Cobra. We've had it with Susie Lou doing it to God knows how many fucking people. And we've also had it with Chris fucking Hansen. And let me point something out. Chris is working with a fucking criminal, and I'm going to make a video on that very fucking soon as well. M trust me. But these people criticize 
arresting these people for their fucking actions. The US Fair Use Doctrine prote protects that. And the fact that these morons are abusing the system to take those particular videos down is fucking stupid. Not to mention possibly illegal. I mean, there's even a clause in YouTube saying that if you falsely accuse, if you submit a false copyright strike on a video or abuse them, it will most likely result in the termination of your account. This would piss anyone off. Now here we have a message from the developer, and more specifically the CEO. We protected our copyright because Total Biscuit has no right to make advertising revenues with our license. Sorry, let's read that again. We protected our copyright because Total Biscuit has no right to make advertising revenues with our license. Um, I'm gonna quickly point something out here. You gave him a review code, and also, he's a game reviewer. Okay, he was a game reviewer. People who actually do this type of stuff on YouTube, they don't do it for free. You didn't realize that, right? They don't do this for free. Actually, this is their livelihood. This is their job. You gave him a review code. So, you kind of fucked yourselves there already. We did not copyright claim Kotaku's video because Kotaku have not added advertising revenues on the video. Really? Okay. But I bet you, you did do it. Not because of advertising, but because of the fucking heavy criticism that Kotaku gave your game. Would you be justified? I've not seen any gameplay footage of the game, and quite frankly, I don't want to. To someone else, sure, you can make a YouTube of our game. Really? It's simple. All the YouTube channel works like this. We give a key of our game and people can evaluate it. But if the YouTube channel wants to make advertising revenues, must obtain authorization from the license. Hang on. I'm going to quickly point something out. One, you spelt YouTube wrong. And two, you spelt license with an extra E. And while we're talking about grammar, you also misspelled Total Biscuit's name. It's Total Biscuit. It's Total Biscuit. There's no space bar. There's no space between Total and Biscuit, you idiots. There's also one from another dev talking about the Metacritic issue. While Game Studio has not encouraged employees to write reviews, nor did we hear of someone in the company doing that. However, I have received a message of one of the reviewers telling me he wanted to help and gave us a good review. We do not want people writing reviews that do not express their opinion only in the purpose to help, as it is not representative of their experience. After taking a look at some of the reviews mentioned, they look so similar that I believe that they might have been planted by someone to try and call for a rise to lower scores. We encourage you not to write reviews to help if it does not represent your opinion. Really? Because, um, ah, fuck's sakes. <laughs> like, you guys are clowns. Even Total Biscuit called them out for me. <laughs> oh, Wild Game Studios, that was a huge mistake on your part. We protected our copyright because Total Biscuit has no right to make advertising revenues with our license. Bullshit! Well, I was going to wait till Monday, not anymore. In a twist of irony, someone re-uploaded the Gary's Incident video on Daily Motion and monetized it for, for themselves. Lovely. Whatever, bigger fish to fry. I'll be donating all the ad revenue from the Gary's Incident video and the video I'm about to put up or on this to the... at EFF. Whatever that is. LOL, happy anniversary, darling. Now go do what you do best. I don't know if that's his partner, his wife, or his mother. I don't fucking know. It could be his grandma, I don't... I really have no clue what that one is. I never even spotted it. And there was also one from Kotaku. No, Kotaku. Kotaku? Kotaku. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I 
mispronounce his name. Kotaku. I don't know, I lost myself there. We contacted World Games for comments and were told by Stephanie that after seeing all the negative impact today, we decided to withdraw our complaint to YouTube. Interestingly, the Kotaku article said TB posted his comments on Reddit and not me posting it from his Twitter. Now, the videos are back up. There was a message sent to Kotaku. Monetizing wasn't mentioned in our communications and it was an error on our part to not have clarified the issue. It was for that particular fact that Wild Game Studios had asked the video's removal. After the video was made unavailable, we had taken seriously the reaction from the community concerning freedom of expression. We strongly believe in the freedom of expression of people and medias and have removed our copyright claim. Wild Game Studio didn't intend on preventing anyone from using their right to freedom of expression. For this reason, Wild Game Studio sincerely apologizes to Turtle Biscuit and anyone who felt that their freedom of speech was denied. I'll get into the why they're morons in a second. Well, as you can see, the copyright strike was removed after the internet carpet bombed Wild Game Studio and Polaris petitioned YouTube. As a result of all of this, there are now multiple copies of this video floating around, including a monetized one on Daily Motion, which is generating ad revenue. We won't ask for those videos to be removed. It proves the power of the Stray sand effect. I can't be asked googling it. But we'd encourage those who monetize to donate the ad revenue from that video to the EFF charity. Um, while we're here. FYI, abusing the DMCA takedown system is sometimes a violation of copyright law, section 152 on knowing misrepresentations related to takedown notices. Source. I'm a copyright lawyer, however, I am not your copyright lawyer, so this is not legal advice. Rather, just a recommendation to talk to your lawyer. Lawyers. You fucking hear that, Susie Lou? And we don't mean your fucking boyfriend. Because, let's face it, he doesn't know fucking dick. So, this is something else that went down with the team. This is literally on the Wikipedia page. Like, guys, you had so much controversy. Involving Turtle Biscuit, and here's the highlighted thing. I've I've got to this bit because of a link. They filed a copyright infringement complaint through YouTube, and the video was removed through its automated takedown system. This led to allegations that the company was abusing YouTube's copyright system in a deliberate attempt to censor online criticism. Oh, I didn't read this bit. Steam users and professional reviewers pointed out that nearly all online video game reviews are funded by advertising and feature game content. Critics also noted that no other online reviews of the game were given similar notices. It was also pointed out that many Steam users had similar criticisms towards the game's quality. Total Biscuit later published a response video which reached 2 million viewers within 3 days, holy shit, where he alleged Wild Game Studio was abusing copyright laws to censor his criticisms. He also alleged the company manipulated their Kickstarter campaign to make it seem that it had more support than it did by having the CEO of the company pledge $10,000 up front and having other pledges high amounts and withdraw them later. Are you fucking kidding me? According to Tech Dirt, the incident was an example of the Streisand effect, whereby attempts to censor criticism only draws more attention to it. In response to objections to its tactics in online communities, Wild Game Studio apologized and withdrew their copyright complaint. I just realized something, you could also apply the Streisand effect to Just Destiny, Chris Hansen, and Susie Lou. There's also one about Metacritic astroturfing. Whatever the fuck that is, let's read this one. Wild Game Studio was also accused of astroturfing, posting fake reviews on Metacritic to increase the game's average view review rating. Critics noted that a large number of recently created accounts gave the game positive reviews without posting anything else on the site. The studio denied being involved and suggested that it may have been one of a number of players that contacted them offering to help with negative online reviews. Um, whether or not you guys created these accounts to, and gave positive reviews on the game, 
or whether it was players who actually offered to help with the criticism, it still falls on you. Because they saw Total Biscuit's review and they saw it get taken down and this is why your game's fallen apart. This is why your game is gone. Wow, I just found this one. Crappy Games Wiki Uncensored. Oh, I remember this one. As of our oh, was moved back in 2018. That means I could have gotten the game back then. Although I had never came across it, unfortunately. The game's terrible reputation was subject to controversy when the developers reacted badly to Total Biscuit's negative review of the game by issuing a DMCA takedown against it before being resorted uh, before being restored at the public backlash at the developers. Not only that, they were also accused of using Ashley Turfing, the practice of masking the sponsors of a message or organization to make it appear as though it originates from and is supported by grassroots participants to post bogus reviews on Metacritic. Oh, that's something else. I just remembered, actually. Um, hang on, let's, uh, go back for a second, because there's something about Kickstarter as well. If that is true, that the company manipulated their Kickstarter campaign with the CEO pledging 10 grand up front and then having others pledge high amounts as well, what in the actual fu What's the point? It's like one fuck up after another. You guys are fucking stupid. Like, for real. You guys are so fucking brainless. Why it sucks. Poor animations. Bad sound effects. Many glitches and bugs. Not notable examples include... Sometimes after putting on bandages, the game sends you back to the start of the level. What? Sometimes when you load a game or you die, it sights you either in the sky or falling through the floor. Huh? Ground are missing textures. Wow. There are invisible walls EVERYWHERE! Oh, lovely. Weak story, terrible ending, bad voice acting, such a uh-oh, laughable on-screen deaths, poor combat, poor AI, bad texture poppin'. Jesus fucking Christ. Why were these guys trying to censor all of that shit? Don't you think it would have been a good idea to have uh, at least... Um... Beta test it first? Don't you think that would have been a great idea to do? Like, put the game in a beta. Let people review it and test it as a feedback. Take the feedback and use that to improve the game. Redeeming qualities, good soundtrack, decent graphics, despite the bad texture poppins. The animations can be so awful, it's hilarious. Oh, okay. Actually, there are games that do have very horrible animations. It just makes you laugh. I'm not going to lie, there are games like that. Before it was removed, it had an overwhelmingly negative rating. More than 2,000 reviews. Holy shit. On Steam. It was also the lowest rated game on Steam before it was removed. I'm not fucking surprised! I mean, first you had the controversy involving Total Biscuits. Then you have the allegation of astroturfing. Then you have all of those problems that have just been pointed out in the category why it sucks. It's no fucking wonder. It's no fucking wonder this happened. And in all honesty, this is what happens when you cannot take fucking criticism. They gave Total Biscuit a review code. What they should have done, instead of issuing a fucking copyright strike on the video, was take his criticism and use it to try and improve the game. That's what any intelligent person would have fucking done. But they didn't. So, congratulations. You... Gibbons. I'm actually curious. Have you guys released any other games? Okay, so they've got a bunch of other games. They have the Slaughtering Grounds, Guys of the Wolf, Uriel's Chasm, Bad Rats, The Rats Revenge, 
These guys made Ride to Hell Retribution. Fuck. That game's horrible. Flat Out 3. Chaos and Destruction. Castle Miner Z. Takes down Red Saber. Our Victory. After Fall Insanity. Alien Rage. Raven's Cry. Alone in the Dark. Illumination. And Deadfall Adventures. And the last game was Alone in the Dark Illumination. I've got no words, no other words to describe this, other than Wild Game Studios severely fucked up. Like, they reacted oh, extremely poorly to the criticism. It was just unacceptable. 100% unacceptable, and this is where this video shall end. I know it's not one of my normal Game Detective videos, but because I can't get my hands on the fucking game, uh, this is about as much as I can do. So, like, unless someone happens to have a copy of it and lets me use it, then I can't touch it. I really can't. And I possibly don't really want to. I mean, it would be great to see it for myself to properly do a Game Detective series on the video, but this is about as best as I can do. So, thanks for watching, and I'll... See you next time, whenever that'll be.